As you may or may not have heard, German rape laws have been reformed unanimously by the entire parliament, because they were backwards. This reform has been pushed for by politicians on all sides of the political aisle and, most prominently, women's rights activists. The criticism was basically that a simple no uttered by a victim during a sexual encounter wasn't enough to convict the perpetrator of rape. The victim had to physically struggle in order for said encounter to qualify as rape. In comparison to other European countries, this seemed like a rather high standard for a court to even open the files. And according to the Istanbul Convention of Human Rights, Germany was in dire need of reforming the law. That's what campaigners claimed and politicians agreed with at least. This is going to be a rather long video because I mean to describe the details of the law in question and the events that led to that change in some depth. First, I'm going to take a look at the actual laws in question. After that, I'm going to discuss two high-profile cases that were used by campaigners and politicians alike to push for new laws. And in the end, I'll give you my personal take on whether or not these cases and the legal situation in general warranted the reform. I'll provide you with time codes for the start of each chapter in the description box below. Part 1. Paragraph 177 and 179. This is what the old law said. Paragraph 177. Sexual cohesion. Rape. Whoever forces another person to endure a sexual act performed by the perpetrator or a third person or forces another person to perform a sexual act on them by using violence, by using the threat of violence, or by taking advantage of a situation in which the victim is exposed to the action of the perpetrator without protection, is going to be punished, blah 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 blah. The criticism was that the phrase exposed to the action of the perpetrator without protection basically meant that a victim had to fight back in order for the action of the perpetrator to qualify as rape. And this was nothing but a dishonest or, at best, uninformed opinion. Not a legal opinion, an activist opinion. A literal interpretation of what the law seemed to be saying on face value. Let me quote Thomas Fischer, federal judge in Karlsruhe and columnist of Zeit newspaper in an article this May. This is the exact opposite of what the federal court has been saying for 10 years. According to the federal court, an offense of sexual cohesion is fulfilled especially when the victim does not fight back out of fear. This decision has been made in hundreds of cases, there is no doubt about it. Yet the stoically repeated opinion of campaigners still claims the opposite. Thomas Fischer has been in a feud over sex crime laws with Spiegel Online's resident feminist and rape culture critic Margarete Stokowski for some time now. If you watch Crowd and Tea or Sargon of Akkad, you may be familiar with how she was one of the most prominent voices that turned the discussion about the Cologne sex attacks into a discussion about German rape culture in general. Their back and forth throughout this year is a good example of a seemingly cold but principled jurisdiction on the one hand and emotional activism on the other. The main concern that federal judge Thomas Fischer verbalized in his article in May was about the proposed change of paragraph 179. This law dealt with the abuse of people who are unable to resist their abuse due to illness or disability. The version of paragraph 179 that was proposed in April included situations in which the victim feared repercussions if she, or he in theory, wouldn't comply. The proposal read like this. Paragraph 179. Sexual abuse while taking advantage of special circumstances. Whoever uses a situation in which another person is unable to resist due to physical or psychological circumstances, is unable to resist due to the surprising nature of the offense, or fears for appreciable harm in case of resisting is going to be punished blah 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 blah. For example, if a female employee didn't resist sexual advances by her boss because she didn't want him to harm her career prospects in some way later down the road, she could accuse her boss of rape. According to this proposal, the perpetrator wouldn't have to threaten or even be aware of the fact that the victim was afraid of possible repercussions. 
the victim only had to be afraid of these possible repercussions or claim that she was. This proposal would have removed any need for ill intent on the side of the alleged perpetrator. It was a direct attack on the presumption of innocence. However, Paragraph 179 has now been abolished completely and the relevant parts of the original law have been included in the new version of Paragraph 177. And luckily, under the new Paragraph 177, appreciable harm has to be threatened by the perpetrator in order for the sexual encounter to qualify as rape. But was there a need for reforming laws concerning sexual abuse? Were the old laws proof of something one might call a rape culture? Given the fact that only the wording of the laws in question was changed to reflect what is already the reality in the German court system, no. Rape allegations even result in a higher rate of convictions in comparison to other crimes. The number of alleged cases of sexual cohesion was 7,350 in 2014. The number of convictions was 1,000. So 13.5% of allegations resulted in a successful conviction. Compared to a conviction rate of 10.8% in cases of alleged assault and 4.8% in cases of alleged theft. It's easier to make the case that Germany is an assault culture or a theft culture if your standard for making that claim is the percentage of convictions. But why has there been this recent push in the first place? There have been two highly publicized news stories this year that gave the issue a lot of attention. The mass sexual assaults that were perpetrated by migrants all over Europe on New Year's Eve and the strange case of a German it girl called Gina-Lisa Lofink. The New Year's Eve attacks or women aren't fair game. The New Year's Eve attacks have been used to push for stricter laws when it comes to sexual assault. The reasons given by campaigners and politicians was that a successful prosecution of the perpetrators wouldn't be possible under the current laws. And so the outrage about sexual assaults turned into an outrage about German laws. However, to present the attempted changes as necessary in order to be able to punish perpetrators like the ones we've seen on New Year's Eve is a complete fabrication. Not only was the theft, the holding and groping of women, the raping that happened that night in full day or should I say moon and limelight a criminal offense, but some of the perpetrators have already been convicted under current laws. Now, 14 people involved in the Köln attacks have been sentenced not for sexual assault, but for crimes like theft and robbery. The first successful conviction for sexual assault that night occurred last week. The two suspects, one Algerian and one Iraqi, got prison sentences because they had touched the two female victims' genitals, attempted to kiss them, lick their faces, offered the guy accompanying them 5,000 euro for the women and, when he refused, threatened to kill him. And because all these crimes were committed after the two migrants had photobombed a picture taken of the victims, it was possible to identify them. In most cases, identifying the perpetrators wasn't possible. Victims didn't remember the alleged perpetrators' faces that well, mistakenly claimed that the Middle Eastern looking dolmetcher did it and sex... Victims didn't remember the alleged perpetrators' faces that well, mistakenly claimed in some cases that the Middle Eastern looking dolmetcher did it and sexual assault is as difficult to prove as any other crime where prosecution is lacking any hard evidence. To deflect from the fact that the mass sexual assault that happened on New Year's Eve was an unprecedented phenomenon in Germany up until this year, to deflect from the fact that the perpetrators were exclusively migrants from the Middle East and North Africa Africa, to prevent the rise of anti-immigration sentiments amongst the people, German radical feminists started talking about German rape culture rather than the challenges of integration and German politicians started talking about the need for reforming laws. Although everything that happened that night was already a criminal offense as shown by the recent successful convictions. Tapping a girl on the ass wasn't the big problem on New Year's Eve and it's a trivialization of the events that night to portray it as such. And it wasn't tapping a girl on the ass or touching her above her clothes that's been criminalized although this is the next thing that's going to be pushed. Surrounding women, holding women, touching their genitals and even raping them was the problem on New Year's Eve. And all these things had been have been, were and are criminal offenses. The strange case of Gina-Lisa Lofink 
or no means no. Gina-Lisa Lofink is a German it girl and, as Germans call it, Skandalnudel. She was a Germany's next top model contestant in 2008 and after she dropped out she posed naked for various magazines. Shortly before she had been a contestant in that show, she did some amateur porn with her boyfriend at the time. She had a number of highly publicized relationships and at least one of them was a complete fabrication in order to get attention. And she was allegedly raped by two guys in 2012 and the two tried to sell film footage of the sexual encounter to a boulevard magazine. She went to court and in the end had to pay her alleged rapists 24,000 euro for libel. This is what we know happened. One night in 2012, Gina-Lisa and one of her alleged rapists, a guy called Pardis F, met at a party, went to her hotel room later that night and had sex. The next night, the two went into the apartment of another guy and the three of them had sex and filmed it. This is the night where she claims to have been raped. Later that same night, she sent Pardis F loving, longing messages. The night after that, she and Pardis F met again and everything was fine. Sometime after that, Pardis F and the other guy, Sebastian P, attempted to sell video footage of their threesome with Gina Lisa to a German boulevard magazine. The magazine refused to buy it and instead sent it to the police because Gina Lisa seemed half conscious and said no and stop it at various points throughout the video. Gina Lisa's manager was made aware of the video and instantly sued the two guys for spreading explicit footage without Gina Lisa's consent. Then Gina Lisa saw the footage and the lawsuit turned into a rape allegation. This is what the two guys claimed. They tried to make money with the video but the sexual encounter was consensual. Her saying stop it and no was about the fact that they were filming. This is what Gina Lisa claimed. She was very drunk, didn't remember having sex with the two guys, alleged that she may have been drugged and only realized she was raped after she actually saw the footage. Gina Lisa also claimed to have seen a gynecologist who was shocked about internal as well as external injuries she had gotten when she was raped. However, she would not give the name of said gynecologist in court and her manager couldn't recall seeing any injuries after the incident. Gina Lisa claimed in front of press cameras that the full video shows her calling for the police. That claim wasn't verified by anyone else that saw the full video as far as I'm aware of and she protested the video being viewed as evidence by the judge. What did the court say? A toxicologist who watched the footage said that he couldn't find any indication of her looking drugged in the reviewed footage. Furthermore, there was nothing in the full video that would suggest her being raped according to the judge and the female prosecutor. So, the two alleged rapists got a small fine for attempting to sell the footage and Gina Lisa was sentenced to pay 24,000 for wrongly accusing them of rape. That's all we know about this case. It's reasonable to assume that in the eyes of the court, not only were the alleged rapists not guilty, they were in fact innocent. Now, I watched some freely available clips of said encounter recently. And no fappening happened, I assure you. I watched it to find out if the no's and stop it's Gina Lisa was said to have uttered were real. The compilation of scenes I saw were about one minute in total. The other 30 minutes aren't publicly available. The video begins with her naked bottle in one hand, partying with the guys and in a good mood. Then she's having sex with one of the guys and everything's still fine. Later there's a scene where one of the guys tries to enter her and she kinda shoves him away with her legs and mumbles no and stop it repeatedly in a very low tone of voice. Another scene is her saying no and pushing the camera away before one of the guys shoves his cock in her mouth. Watching these clips for the first time turned my stomach a bit and I do believe that she didn't want some of the acts performed in these clips to happen. But I must admit that watching scenes of rape creates a very emotional response on my part even when they are fictional. Keep in mind that I can't say if these scenes were in the right order and what's missing in between. Apparently watching the whole video and not only out of context clips like I did convinced the court enough 
of the alleged rapist's innocence to go even further and punish her. The inconsistencies in her version of the story surely didn't help her case either. Critics claim that it was her past of using her sexuality for attention and money that was the nail in her coffin. That the court was influenced by her past behavior. We will see about that at some point in the future as the case is currently revisited. For now, all I can say for sure is that the campaign launched in support of her is a rush to judgment. And again, the new laws have nothing to do with this case. Because although our factual knowledge of this case is very small at this point, we can assume that the problem was not that the court didn't see her fighting back physically. Gina Lisa's case has plenty of other weak chains. Please allow me to virtue signal for a moment. I want rapists to be convinced as much as the next men and women. I am one of these guys for whom rape creates such a gut feeling of disgust that it feels like a worse offense than the actual murder of another person. Not only did I witness my own mother's rape when I was a child, I have also been in a relationship with a girl that had been raped years before we met. I know about the massive effects rape can have on a person's sexuality as well as overall personality and sense of security. I'm quite familiar with all of it and I want justice to be served. Virtue signaling over. I'm not going to allow my emotional investment to undermine the very principle of justice, however. In dubio pro reo. Innocent until proven guilty. As frustrating and hurtful as this may be for victims that have to see their rapist get off, this principle is an almost unprecedented civilizational achievement. Justice is expected to serve an alleged perpetrator as much as it's expected to serve an alleged victim. Because any alleged perpetrator can be the victim just as much as the alleged victim is. This principle of justice matters for the very simple and pragmatic reason that this is the only way to prevent witch hunts resulting from false allegations. And this is where I conclude that the new rape laws make sense although they look like a political distraction to me. Even worse, they are the product of dishonest and flat out inciting campaigns launched by the false allies of equality. Although the new laws aren't going to change anything in the reality of German court procedures, the fact that the slightly confusing wording has been corrected is a good thing, even if it's only to eliminate one strawman argument amongst many others when it comes to the issue of rape culture. I'm the Thoughtful Contrarian. Feel free to rate, comment, share and subscribe.